Welcome back. We're continuing our coverage here at Davos 2023. Joining me now is Prashant Ruya. Prashant, many thanks for joining us here in Davos. So let me start by asking you about the second inning, so to speak, and clean and green seems to be uh, the strategy going forward for you. Actually, first of all, thanks for, for having me. Uh, I think you, you named it perfectly. It's, uh, it is very much uh, uh, focused around, the group itself is focused around the same sectors which we have been involved in, but obviously with the new technologies, ESG focused, uh, which are all you know, necessarily around decarbonization, mm. you know, uh, energy transition, and moving fossil fuel business uh, or fossil fuel energy, which is what the world has been focused on for the last five decades, mm into you know greener greener fuels and greener energy mm -hmm. uh, it's comprised really of two parts one part is uh, uh, new facilities like renewable power hydropower whatever whatever nuclear in some cases uh, but also in transitioning existing infrastructure uh, into you know sustainable green infrastructure mm -hmm. so it's actually comprising of both mm. And uh, it's interesting because uh, you know, the general feeling was you can just replace everything you have mm. or what we've built. Right. Uh, but I think that's now, after the last one year, fairly clear that you also need to transition. Absolutely. And everybody has sort of recalibrated their, their expectations. Uh, and one of the themes which I'm picking up here at Davos is also <laughs> very similar. Uh, energy security and then how do we get, you know, uh, greener. Absolutely, and I think everyone is trying to figure out the adaptation roadmap at this point in time. Right. Uh, so let's let's talk about each of these businesses that you spoke of. Uh, on the first one, which is really new technology and so on and so forth, are you looking at collaborations? Are you looking at partnerships? Uh, what is the future likely to hold? Absolutely, we are very much open. Uh, the, the way we have recalibrated the group is uh, SR Global, which is the uh, holding company for the group, is now making investments pretty much similar to private uh, private sector, private equity uh, principles. Uh, we've got about 12 portfolio companies within the group, within the four sectors. And uh, each of these companies are either transitioning into uh, you know, greener business or we are looking at new investments which, will, which, which are very much in that space. So it's, it's around, uh, the, in, the investments are around energy transition for some of our existing assets which include the refinery in the UK, uh, which includes uh, probably green ammonia coming out of India uh, mm. to supply the hydrogen, includes blue hydrogen in uh, mm. making blue hydrogen in the UK. Uh, and then we are also spending a lot of time uh, building a gas, transpo gas transportation, uh, LNG transportation business in India, uh, which, can, which will bring down the uh, emissions, uh, CO2 emissions and SOx and NOx emissions by nearly 40% mm -hmm. uh, as compared to diesel uh, diesel transportation. And these are for trucks. These are for heavy mm -hmm. heavy vehicles and heavy transportation. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's themes like that which we, are, which we are working on going forward. So what kind of investments are we talking about across each of these verticals? No, the, the investments are, are not massive. These are, you know, uh, smaller bite size investments. Uh, we don't, and these are not very large greenfield projects like what we have done uh, in our uh, in our previous uh, mm. few years, uh, previous two decades, really. Uh, so these are smaller investments. We, the energy transition, for example, uh, is about three billion dollars uh, over over the next five six years. But they are smaller projects. These are not. This is not one big project, mm. right? Uh, and then you know each and every one of those projects has uh, investment plans, uh, and and we are going to look. We are going to go at them one at a time. Mm. But these are you know projects which get completed in let's say eighteen months to, to twenty four months not you know five years so they're uh, not long gestation no. Uh, no. or high capital intensive projects exactly. at this point in time exactly. so where are the opportunities I mean you spoke a little bit about hydrogen for instance I mean the Indian government has has released its hydrogen mission plan uh, to incentivize the use of hydrogen and right. but you know how how aggressively are you targeting that space no it's very interesting mm -hmm. uh, first of all the government of India has come out with a very interesting policy uh, I think it will support uh, both manufacture of equipment, uh, electrolyzers, battery storage, all of these things, but also, uh, and then also the actual making of hydrogen. Uh, and uh, so it's, it's a good start. It's not it's certainly not going to be enough because India requires, mm. you know, a big, a big canvas uh, if, if you're going to move towards a hydrogen economy. Uh, uh, but we are looking at 
it slightly differently. Mm. Uh, our idea of building a hydrogen project of one gigawatt is to actually export export it uh, to the UK. Okay. Uh, which is where we think we can do some captive. Uh, it's it's largely a captive requirement. Uh, so we are looking at it more from an export perspective, at least for now. Uh, well, I think many of the other uh, domestic uh, players are looking at it more for for uh, you know changing the domestic market. Hmm. which is also a massive opportunity. Hmm. So captive and export to start with, but you know, is that likely to be the beginning or is, is that what the aspiration is for you? I don't know where, the, where, time's go, where things are going to go, but hmm. uh, it, this, is a, this is a substantial project by itself to start with. Uh, and, and we'd rather you know, do something, it's not as big as what many, as many are talking, but rather do something, deliver it, uh, get it on the ground, hmm. get it operational, and then we can always talk about you know what more we can do uh, going forward. Okay, so let's talk about the milestones that you hope to be able to achieve over the next say 12 to 18 months, as far as each of these businesses are concerned. Uh, well, milestones uh, it's it's tough to say because these uh, these are uh, projects which are under development. Uh, or we've been working on them actually, Shireen, for the last uh, two three years mm -hmm. now. It's not mm -hmm. something which we have started today. We are probably talking about it now, but we started working on these projects a couple of years back. And uh, we are really looking at seeing how we can get these projects up and running uh, between the 20, year 25, uh, op get it operational by you know, December 25, uh, is what we are working towards. Uh, it's obviously linked to you know, a lot of regulatory things still, uh, in terms of approvals, in terms of policy, in terms of various things. But we, are, we believe if we can do this, then we'll be amongst the earlier, early players uh, in the industry. Okay, so uh, let me end by asking you about the outlook that you're picking up here in Davos. Uh, business sentiment is a bit, you know, pessimistic, cautious, depending on which uh, company you're speaking world. to and which part of the world <laughs> that company comes from. Right. But what's the sense that you're getting? Well, I think it's a bit of a mixed bag. So, first of all, the positives. Mm -hmm. If you are, if you're coming out of India, then clearly, I think India is uh, really in a sweet spot from from an investment destination, uh, supply chain uh, options. Uh, Obviously, the technology, IT businesses are doing very strong. Uh, so India is obviously in a very, very strong position. Uh, uh, and I think we'll attract a lot of uh, investments going forward. Uh, but if you're coming out of Europe, then you know generally the situation is quite, quite difficult. Uh, the, in, the inflation is very high, yeah. and uh, their investment sentiment is, is quite low. So it's, it depends where you're coming from. Chinese are not that much represented here this, this year. Uh, and, 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 and so we really don't know where they're coming from, though there is talk that now they are you know, wanting to open up and yeah. sort of re-engage, re -engage, get back in the game, but the time will tell. Yes, the time will tell. Well, Prashant, thanks very much for stopping by. It was great to speak with you after a long time. Appreciate your time here in Davos. Thank you very much. Ray. Well, we are going to take a break. There's a lot more coming up. Don't go anywhere. We're back in a minute with more.